How learners of all ages, my name is Mr. Montgomery, and well, this is Phoebe, and I teach fourth and fifth grade math. And today, we're gonna to be learning about temperature. Now, Phoebe, she's our class pet. She is a ball python, and she's a big, big sweetheart. But the thing that Phoebe really likes more than anything else is staying warm. She's a cold-blooded creature that loves to stay warm because she can't produce her own heat. And so for that fact, Having her cage over on the other side of my room and having it at the right temperature helps her stay alive and healthy and most importantly, happy. So we're gonna be talking about temperature today. And temperature can be measured in one of, well, a couple of ways, but we're gonna be learning two different ways. And so I know you're very curious. So um, we're gonna be talking about Fahrenheit and Celsius. Now, the reason I have Phoebe out here is because her cage is set up in Celsius. And so I have to do conversions to figure out about how warm your cage has to be. So if we're taking a look at the board over here, we have that water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but zero degrees Celsius. Celsius is a system based on how water freezes and boils. And speaking of boils, for Celsius, water boils at 100 degrees. So it freezes at zero degrees, boils at 100 degrees. And so the room of an average temperature or the average temperature of a room is around 20-ish degrees on, on a little bit on the chillier side. Her cage, Phoebe's cage, has to be around 90 something degrees. So I have it set around anywhere between 33 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius. That's in the low to mid 90 degrees of Fahrenheit. Now in America, we use Fahrenheit to uh, get certain uh, temperatures. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and then a comfortable temperature for room, on a little bit on the cheerleader side actually, would be 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna keep those uh, temperatures up there to help us with our temperature gauging. Now I can't perfectly draw a thermometer. A thermometer is a device that uses a liquid on the inside that raises and lowers based on the temperature it is in its environment or atmosphere. So you're gonna have to do the thermometer reading in your book more so than what I can draw up on the board. But I will say on page 330 has an excellent drawing of a thermometer that has both Fahrenheit on the left side and Celsius on the other side. So that way, when we get to the point where we have to compare different degrees in Celsius and Fahrenheit, you can accurately compare them instead of just using these ones off to the side of the board to guess and check. And the very first thing that we're gonna be doing is comparing 30 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, 30 degrees Celsius is a little bit warmer than the 20 degrees Celsius of room temperature. And I know that I wouldn't move that much further up, but it would be double this amount for 120 degrees or pretty close to, because half of 120 is 60. That's really close to 20 degrees. So we would almost have to double that in order to get to a temperature that's higher than 120 degrees. So that 120 degrees Fahrenheit is greater than 30 degrees Celsius, but let's check on page 330. On page 330, 120 degrees Fahrenheit is actually a little bit below 50 degrees Celsius. So using my checkpoints over there, wasn't so bad this time, but I used page 330 to double check my work. All right, my fourth grade friends, if we take a look at page 245, you will see that we're gonna be doing three practice problems. Practice problem number one, two, and three. Now practice problem one and two, they're asking you to find the temperature one in Fahrenheit and one in Celsius. And uh, for number three, they're asking you to choose the most reasonable temperature for a cold glass of lemonade. So I can either choose three degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius, 45 degrees Celsius, or 75 degrees Celsius, ooh, that'd be a hot cup of lemonade, <laughs> for a cold glass of lemonade. Also, if you take a look at page 245 in your workbook, at the very top, you will see the exact same thermometer uh, that is listed on page 330 of your hardcover. That way you can use that for your homework and practice problems. If you have any questions on how to measure temperature, Please let me know when you come to class tomorrow.